Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in the gorgeous Peak District once again. Been taking a few photographs of this lovely little waterfall we've got behind me. I'll show you those pictures at the end. But today we're going to be talking about the Format High Tech Firecrest filters that I've recently bought. And I've been testing them out over the last two or three weeks. I've been very impressed with them so far. What we're going to do today is I'm just going to show you basically how the system works. And I'm going to take a few test shots. I'm going to make those images available for you to download. So stay tuned till the end and you'll be able to grab those images for yourself. Take a look and see what you think. So we'll take a little wander down this stream here. We'll set up a few shots and we'll talk about the system in a bit more detail. So I decided on the 85mm from that high-tech Firecrest range. It's a modular system. And yeah, it's uh, basically what I got was the ND starter kit. Now, let me just talk you through what you get basically with the kit. You get the uh, filter holder, you get the 77mm uh, polarizer. You also get a bunch of step-up rings. The sizes are 77, 72, 67, and 58. You get the three-stop graduated filter and also a six-stop ND filter. So yeah, a nice basic setup basically. Um, so let me just quickly tell you uh, how it all sets up. Basically, the circular polarizer screws onto the front of the lens. So unlike, say, Lee filters where you've got the filter on the outside of the filter holder, this sits actually on the lens, which is great because you can use it just as a circular polarizer. So you can rotate that just as you would any normal circular polarizer, which is brilliant. It means you don't have to um, assemble the, uh, the filter holder first. The, the holder itself attaches just with this dial on the side here. So literally just um, screw that on. So, you know, super easy to set up. Now, if you want to rotate the polarizer, there's just a dial on the side here. And you just literally rotate that and it rotates the circular polarizer within the holder. So let me quickly talk you through the filters. They all come in this really nice durable padded case, which is great. And the glass filters themselves also come in a nice soft velvety, you know, wallety type thing. Um, this is the six stop, as you can see there, they're glass. They just slide in the front there until you've got them in position. So yeah, super quick to set up, really are. Obviously, I'm probably easier just to take the, the holder off, to take the filters out. Let's pop that back on a second. So on the front here, we've got two holders, which will take two filters. So you could put two grads in, or you could maybe put a six stop and a 10 stop in if you wanted to. But they also send another attachment as well, which will allow for three filters. Now, I'm assuming the reason why they fixed two on there is probably something to do with vignetting. And there's one thing that annoyed me about the coking system. Anything below 13 mil on the Fuji that I've got here, you've got vignetting naturally when you got down to like 11 10 or 10 mil, you could actually see the filter holder. So it was completely useless really below 13. This doesn't have that problem at all. So this is perfect for APS-C size sensor, sensors. Um, now, I mean, you know, this lens is a 72 mil thread so it's even quite a large lens for an APS-C so yeah no vignetting whatsoever which is perfect it really is but the, the plus side was the fact that I came from the coking P system and I've got these coking nuances filters now they're, they're not cheap filters you know this was about 90 pounds they're, they're pretty good actually and um, much better than the plastic ones but um, yeah these fit in here as well which is great and even though I think coking's about 83 mil or something and the holders an 85 they, they fit in perfectly so which is great it means i don't have to buy another 10 stop filter which was uh, obviously going to be a bit of a pain because i was going to have to sell it used and then buy a new one and i'm just getting the same thing basically so the fact that they fit in there is really really helpful so if anybody's coming from a coking p system you'll be pleased to know that these filters will fit in so which is an absolute bonus but as always with filters, the real test is in actually, you know, image quality. If, uh, you know, you're getting a good sharp image and obviously if there's any terrible colour casts and yeah, I'm looking forward to testing these out. So far, I haven't noticed anything, but I haven't done any side by side comparisons, which is why I'm doing this video. So I'm going to take a few test shots now. It's been a lovely day, it really has. Pretty overcast, 
bit gloomy, but ideal for shooting waterfalls and trees, actually. Not too much wind around either, so quite good for long exposures. Nothing's moving around too much. So, yeah, I'm going to take these images back to Lightroom. We're going to have a look at them, and I'll give you my thoughts. So I'll see you back at the computer. So back at the studio now, I've got the images loaded into Lightroom. So before we start, I thought I'd just mention a few things. So when I took the images, I had the camera locked down on the tripod, so there was no camera shake. I also used a two second timer on all of the shots as well to eliminate any camera shake as well. I had the camera in full manual settings, including the white balance as well, which was set to daylight. The only setting that will change through the sequence of images will be the shutter speed because obviously we're putting a filter on the front of the camera so it's going to lengthen our shutter speed. So the ISO and the aperture will remain the same in all of the shots. The only thing that will obviously alter will be the shutter speed. So let's take a look at this first image. Now I wasn't focusing too much on composition. I'm not trying to make a fantastic award winning image at all. It was more a case of finding good test subjects to test the filters out. And I think this is quite a good example. What I did was I focused down here on these grasses and this boulders here in the foreground for this shot. Uh, I'm at F8 and I've just kind of let the depth of field fall away. So at the back here, it's gonna be a lot softer, but this is gonna give us a, a good indication of what's gonna be sharp in the image looking at this foreground interest. Now, as you can see, we're at F8, ISO 200, and we're 15th of a second for this shot. This is our base shot, so there's no filters at all on this image. As we can see here, we've got the polarizer on now and that's taken the, the glare off the water and it's slowed our shutter speed down a little bit to eighth of a second and it's just added a bit more saturation to the image as well. We can see a little bit more movement in the water and then in the third shot, we've added in the six stop ND filter and the polarizer. So we've taken the glare off the water We've increased the exposure time to eight seconds and that's smoothed the water out and uh, given this kind of dreamy ethereal kind of feel to the shot. So let's have a look at these first two images side by side. So on the left, we've got the unpolarized, unfiltered image. This is our base exposure. And this is the image that is polarized. So we've got the polarizer turned up to its fullest. So let's have a quick look in our area of focus. So yeah, we focus down here in the rocks and grasses. And I'm quite surprised by this, um, but to me, the polarized image looks, if anything, a tad sharper than the unpolarized shot. Um, I think there's a little bit more detail in the rocks and the grasses look a little bit sharper. Now, I guess it could be the fact that the polarizer is taking a little bit of the glare, the brightness away from some of the foliage and just making it look a little bit crisper. But for me, I, I think that the polarized image looks a little bit sharper than the unpolarized image, which can definitely see a little bit more sharpness in, in the rocks and in the grasses as well. So I'm quite surprised by this actually. Let's just have a quick look at the water at the back here, just to see if there's any color cast or color shift. It's quite a good indicator. Normally water is where you'll see, you know, like a magenta hue or, a, or you know, warmer or cooler image. Um, to me, they both look very, very similar. I think this one is perhaps slightly brighter, but again, obviously we've got a different exposure time. So, you know, that, that could be why. That's not too important. It's really the color and the color is very, very similar in both of those two shots. So um, my conclusion looking at these two images would be that the polarized image is slightly sharper and also say it's a bit more saturation and overall it just looks a touch warmer and that's the effect of the polarizer. So overall, you know, I'm quite surprised by, by these two uh, comparisons. So let's just drop in the third shot, which was adding the six stop ND filter. And obviously we've ex our exposure time of eight seconds. And we'll compare these two shots. So again, let's look at our point of focus down here in the, in the foreground area. And we can still see, I think it is a fraction sharper than the original unfiltered image, which is, is bizarre. But you know, I guess maybe that's adding the, the polarizer to the shot there. It's taking that 
glare off the foliage and just sharpening things up. So yeah, quite surprised. Again, let's uh, let's look at the the white water in the background. Again, there's no color cast whatsoever. The greens here look very similar. Sharpness looks very similar. And overall, yeah, so quite a pleasing image. So let's take a look at this next shot. Now I've set this shot up slightly different. I focused on the background as opposed to the foreground just to you know change it up a little bit. And there's four images with this one. So we've got uh, an unfiltered image. We've got a polarized image. We've got a polarized and six stop ND and then one with just the six stop ND. So yeah, four different ones. This is not polarized. We can see quite clearly the difference between the polarized and the unpolarized shot. So yeah, let's have a quick look at this one. As we can see, with a 30th of a second, just got a little bit of movement in the water. Uh, F8, the foreground's relatively sharp. I'd be happy with that. But this is our point of focus here in the background. As you can see, everything's nice and sharp, so it's a good reference shot. This is our polarized image, and let's uh, Let's put these up side by side so we can see the difference. There's a little bit more saturation in the polarized image than there is the unpolarized shot. And I think, you know, that's it's the effect of the polarizer. The polarizer saturates greens and foliage and it takes reflection and glare off leaves as well as it does with water. So the polarizer is working exceptionally well, I think, here. In terms of sharpness between the two, let's have another look just to see. I don't think there's a lot in it in terms of sharpness. If anything, probably again, the polarized image is marginally sharper if I was going to pick between the two. So yeah, quite surprising that. So let's just throw up our polarized and ND filter as well with this shot. So this shot is with the polarizer and the ND filter. So again, I'm just going to zoom into our point of focus. Just to have a look, compare the two. Not a lot of difference really, I don't think. Again, if anything, these blades of grass, the detail in this rock is just a little bit clearer than the unpolarized, unfiltered shot. So these filters are obviously doing a lot of work in terms of making the quality of the image better as well, as, and obviously adding to the effect that we're getting on the image in terms of taking the glare off the water and reducing the shutter speed. So I find this quite incredible, I really do. And you can really see here with this shot how the greens are a lot more vibrant and the overall image looks a touch warmer and, and that's the effect of the polarizer. If we come in and zoom in on this area here, we can really see the vibrancy in the greens coming through and this area of the grasses looks a lot clearer and a lot more punchier and vibrant so yeah the polarizer is doing a great job and that's and that's why it's so important for landscape photography so let me just uh, pop up the next shot here which is the unpolarized version so exactly the same shot with a six stop nd but this time we've taken the polarizer out of the shot so we can clearly see the effects it's having here. Um, this image looks a lot more vibrant than this one. There's a lot more lush green colors in it. And obviously we've got all the glare on the water here. We can clearly see in this shot, we can see the, the rocks and uh, the stones underneath the water. Whereas this one we can't, it's just a, a gray kind of textured feel, but you know, we don't always want to take the glare off the water. Sometimes it, you know, can add to the shot. So it's always good to, you know, compare the images and see for yourself what, what you know, what you think will work for that particular shot. So overall, very, very surprised with the findings of this. Yeah. So when I'm looking at this, I'm finding that the image, the image quality is actually better with the filters on than it is without them. So yeah. I mean, we're talking very fine marginal details here, but yeah. Absolutely uh, surprised by that result. I would have expected the non-filtered image to uh, be sharper and clearer than the filtered images. So yeah, there's no color casts whatsoever in these images that I can see here, which again was one of the things I was really hoping that wasn't going to be the case with the filters. Obviously, Firecrest say that their neutral ND filters are, you know, 
completely um, you know, colour cast free and from my findings here uh, I completely agree with that so that is uh, yeah, very very good to see indeed. So if you follow the channel uh, you might know that I do reviews on lenses and cameras and stuff and when I do I make the images available for you to download so you can make these choices for yourself and I think it's very very important you know I can give my opinions but that's just what I'm seeing with my eyes everybody looks at things differently so for you to be able to get these images and and put them on your own computer and take a look at them for yourselves I think is very very important. So what I've done, I've done this one slightly different. I've put a blog post together as well on my website, which you can go and check out on the specs and a few more thoughts from me as well on the filters that you can read. And so a bit more information for you to look at. And I've also got a link in there as well that will take you to the Selfie store where you can pick up these images for yourself. Now, in the past, I've made these images free and I'm going to do that with these as well. Um, but I'd just like to say thanks to everybody that's dropped me a little tip as well for the images that they've downloaded in the past. It really does help me create videos like this because they do take a lot of time, um, you know, several days to put a video like this together. So I do really appreciate your tips. So the, the price for the photographs is $2, but you can put the code in and pick those up for free as well. You'll find the code in the description on the Selfie page. So it's entirely up to you guys. There's no pressure from me to to uh, pay so you just do what you feel is right for you so things coming up on the channel we've got the uh, obviously the new series landscape photography tips uh, there's lots of new stuff on the new website as well that you can check out there's workshops some new workshops the snowdonia one there's five places left on that there's a one-to-one -one workshops as well which you can check out on there there's a print store which has got quite a few prints on there that i've put on there as well and yeah, lots more to check out on the channel in the up and coming weeks. We're off to Snowdonia in a couple of weeks time, taking on some of the gorgeous scenery there and we've got lots more in the pipeline. So yeah, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you liked it and I will see you next time guys. Take care.